Hey, what's up guys? My name's Alec Ferreira from the St. Carlos Apache Tribe, located near St. Carlos, Arizona. It's about two hours east of Phoenix, you know, right there in the mountains, not in the desert, it's not flat, not like here. You gotta love it. Uh, so, pretty much I'm a junior slash senior at Creek University. Um, studying political science and economics, and currently an intern at UNMC, uh, working at the Youth Enjoy Science Program. I'm um, just glad to be here. Um, can't wait to talk to y'all folks about Four year experience. Um, kind of glad. I'm kind of glad I'm here, just representing a private institution. That's kind of cool. But you know, you and I gotta love it too. Go Huskers. <laughs> Go <Jays. laughs> Hi, my name is JC and Sullivan Mayfield. I'm an enrolled member of the Omaha Tribe in Nebraska. I was born in California, but I grew up here in Lincoln. Um, I am currently the president of Unite here on campus. Unite stands for the University of Nebraska Intertribal Exchange. I'm really excited for you guys to be here, and hopefully you can come join us here at UNO. Uh, my name is Luta Menard. I'm an enrolled member of the Lakota tribe, Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Um, I am the vice president of UNITE. I'm a sophomore here at UNL, and I'm a Native Studies major. Hi, everybody. I'm Isaiah. Um, I am not really enrolled in a particular tribe. I'm Native Central American. Um, so my majors here at UNO are psychology and economics, and I'm excited to answer some of your questions. Um, my name is Cecilia from Whitefeather. I'm from Red Lake, Minnesota. I'm a second year criminal justice major with minors in Native American studies and American Sign Language. Um, I'm part of UNI on campus as well as a member of Delta Design New Multicultural Sorta Incorporated. Um, yeah. Uh, my name is Alexandria Neff. I'm enrolled in the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska. I'm a freshman here at UNL, and my major is elementary education. I'm Jameson Wolfleader. I'm from uh, the Spirit Lake Sioux Tribe. Uh, I am a freshman studying textiles, and I'm a member of the UNI as well. Since we can start with questions, if you have any. Yeah. <laughs> Have you guys noticed anything about the whiteness of campus? <laughs> we'll go right in there. We'll go right in there. Do you have any questions about it? <laughs> the sorority girls are sometimes nice. Sometimes. Okay, I guess I can talk about Greek license for black hair. Yeah. So I'm at a traditional um, Greek. Member, I don't live in the houses that you guys see on like Greek Row. I'm a multicultural Greek council member, so uh, we do things very differently. We don't live in the houses. Um, one of the biggest things is we're a lot cheaper as well. Um, I'm part of those I knew, which we're the first and only multicultural sorority on campus, so we're not like Asian focused, we're not Latino focused. We like accept everybody of all backgrounds. Um, like, I don't know if you guys know anything about Greek life. Like we, um, you know, requires uh, community service hours. We require like a certain GPA. We have to go into the community and you know spread our name and do good things, uh, fundraise. Um, we have our senior chief event every year. So this year, our philanthropy is what we focus on, what we raise money for, which is missing and exploited children. But this year, we're focusing on missing and exploited indigenous children. So we're doing our research on that. We talked to the senator who passed the bill that it's a requirement for Nebraskan um, law enforcement to report when indigenous women and children go missing because it wasn't a requirement of police departments um, before the bill was passed. So we met with her, talked with her. Um, we're going to be meeting with other people like in the Capitol and stuff like that. So as a Greek, me Greek member, we have like we hold ourselves up to like higher standards as well as people look at us with higher standards. And then me being the only indigenous member in multicultural Greek council, I also hold myself up to a standard to make sure like our narrative is being represented in a well-rounded uh, way and like facts are being set straight and stuff like that. So I mean, if you have any like personal questions about Greek life, if you were thinking about it, whatever, let me know. You out. How would one apply to join your organization? So um, it really depends on the organization you're interested in. A lot of um, organizations have alumni, so she, like chapters and stuff like that. You just get in contact with them or get in contact with somebody you know or like see that's in that organization. And you just see like if that's what you, your values align with them or if what they do as an organization aligns with what you want to do, the change you want to make, you just contact them. You can make your own chapter here, wherever you feel like it's necessary. Um, like in Omaha or like the surrounding states. So honestly, if you feel like that organization fits with you, 
you just talk to them and they can get you set up with all of that. Is anyone thinking about coming to UNL or going to Creighton? I got a question. Yeah. Basically for everybody, uh, what made you guys pick UNL? Well, I guess I can start. I'm from Lincoln, born here, raised here. I went to Lincoln High, which is the most diverse school in the city, and I was part of the International Baccalaureate program. So I did get a pretty good scholarship here at UNL. Um, and I knew I could stay close to my parents, so that's why I chose this. I can go. Um, well, <laughs> I chose UNL because, well, like, I grew up in Lincoln. I also attended Lincoln High. But I was really focused on eventually joining Unite. Like, as a kid, like, I, they threw a powwow every year here in Lincoln. Like, I went to their powwow. I knew a lot of people involved in Unite as like I, when I was younger. So I was like, that's something I want to do. Like the fact that there was a leadership opportunity for native kids on campus here was a big deal for me, especially with like, um, I'm a Buffett scholar. So that was a big game changer for me, like having a full ride and choosing anywhere in Nebraska. Like it only made sense for me to go here. I guess I can go next, going off of that, I'm also a Buffett scholar, so that helped kind of narrow down my choices as well as like if you knew me personally I'm a person that like jumps into every situation with two feet so I knew it's a big Ten school predominantly white like I wasn't going to see people like me and I wanted to change that I wanted to change like what it, it meant to go to a big Ten school especially in Lincoln Nebraska where you're not going to see people like you as well as you know it my dad it was like my dad true for me to go to a big Ten I'm from Minnesota so I wanted to go back home but a girl only got fifty-six thousand dollars a semester to be going back to Minnesota, so it was. This was the second best choice, as well as like I know Greek like this already that I'm a part of was here, so I I knew that I wanted to join that, and especially like I said, I just wanted to change like the scene that I see on campus. So okay, well I chose UNL because I don't know. Well, at first, it was a tough decision for me. I was either going to come here or I was going to go to SDSU because they're both um, schools that I've always looked into like throughout high school. And um, what really changed the game for me was um, I started getting in contact more with UNL and they gave me scholarships. Unfortunately, I'm not a Buffett scholar, but um, there are other scholarships that the school gave me, like the um, Heritage Native Heritage Scholarship and I got the Nebraska Achievement Award Scholarship. And so I chose to come here because of that reason and because um, it's only two hours away from where I live, so it's not a place where I'm gonna be going back back home every weekend, but it's also a place where I'm not, where I can go home if I want to, it's, it's needed. I chose Lincoln mainly because um, I got all my school paid for it through a program from my high school. Uh, that was mainly the reason why I chose Lincoln. I wasn't planning on coming, coming here, but I'm preschool, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it was just about the cost and the price of it to my family. I graduated from high school from a small town nearby um, Lincoln, so it just was the best cost benefit analysis for me. Why did you choose Creighton? Oh, why did you choose Creighton? <laughs> uh, I chose Creighton because you know it was a small, smaller institution. I wanted a smaller campus. Also, it was a Jesuit, so it kind of aligned with a lot of my values of like you know being a man for others, serving the community, and kind of like going towards like a more open world view, like intact in the world, kind of like loving fearlessly, not, not like like love, but <laughs> more like a brotherly type of love, like serving, like serving the community. So that was something that really got to me. Also. Contrary to my belief, you know, private schools, they do have money to offer. So as an out-of-state student, they offer me, you know, they offer me a huge scholarship, full ride right now, so that's kind of cool. They don't generally, like, offer that to other students. Uh, but also my tribe also helped me out with the, some of my funding, so they told me, like, if you go to Arizona State, yeah, we're not going to give you all, like, full funding, we're not going to help you out. But if you go to Creek University, they're going to, we're going to help you out. So they just, they just cover the remaining costs. Also, scholarships like in the area, so uh, the American Indian Education Fund. Uh, that was another per another perk of like you know that was one of the reasons I wanted to come here because you know the American Indian Education Fund 
provide me this opportunity to create this. So yeah, it just made it even better. So money, money is a huge, a huge driver. I think that was just a common theme throughout this entire thing. Just <laughs> money. <Yeah. laughs> so you answered the question about money. We were talking about barriers earlier on. If money is not an issue, what were some other barriers that you had? Or you had not? Were you worried about anything, fitting in, any of these things? Any different, big, big place, small place? Well, yeah, like just going back to the barriers. Uh, I think by applying to all these scholarships, that's like one of the things that's like a pandemic here in the United States. That Indian people, us Indian people, we don't apply for scholarships. There's so there's millions of dollars that go unused every year. And, you know, one of the things I did, I was actually part of this. Uh, I was actually part of this uh, institute, leadership institute in Phoenix. Uh, they actually forced us to stay in a room to apply for hundreds of scholarships overnight. So. You know, the only reason I was able to do that is because, one, you're actually going to be talking about this in a second, I think, your personal statement or your scholarship statements. Seriously, if you just write one or two different types, you can use it for so many different scholarships. It's a universal form. And I was able to apply to 138. I only got 10, but still. 138, it's like, it seems like a lot, but in all reality, it's just like copy, paste, putting in your information. It's like applying for a job, like, you know, like a fast food job or something like that. Really simple. And then like going off of that, um, there's like you said, there's like thousands of scholarships that are out there. Like I have an unconventional one. I have one that for people who wear glasses, it's like a fifty dollar scholarship, but like fifty dollars buys your books, you know? And I have a friend who got one for her curly hair, like she had to send in a sample and like prove she had curly hair. A hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> scholarship. So there's like scholarships out there for crazy things that like my, you might think like, oh, this isn't gonna pay for anything, but that's a book, that's part of your class, those are school supplies and stuff like that. And like money, like it's there. If you if you really need it and you really want it, it's, it's gonna be there. So. I think a major barrier like that I thought about was not like fitting in kind of, like I went to a really diverse high school. I grew up like very traditional native ways, like all that stuff. So I was like, how am I supposed to fit in in a big class of 150 white kids? And I still think about that today. Like almost all of my classes except one has over 100 people in it. And I'm one of two or three non-white people in the class. So like it took a while for me to kind of like adjust to that. And I think that's a big barrier for like people from reservations or people who grow up in small towns and are used to their community. And I think it's important to kind of break those barriers because one day, if you have a corporate job or if you move off the res or like wherever you want to go, there's going to be people that aren't like you and you're going to have to learn how to work with those people anyway. So I think that's like, that's a big deal breaker for some people, especially, or like transportation, being in a big city. Sometimes it's annoying being surrounded by people all the time. Like it gets really crowded, but like that isn't something like you should let stop you from coming to a big institution because there's a crazy amount of opportunity here for anybody. You just kind of have to look for it, I guess. Because I can continue. Um, so like another thing that also like shell shocked me was like when you walk into these classrooms and all of these kids have these like MacBooks and have like the newest iPhone and like, you know, dress down and like name brands and you're in there with your sweatpants and your notebook, you know what I mean? Like that was the biggest thing my first semester was like, wow, like I don't have the money that these people do, but I'm here. And that's the one thing that you should like realize and remember that you're here, you made it this far, that you made it through the front door, that you made it to class and you had the opportunity to come to school, wherever you pick, wherever you choose to go to that you were able to come. And then also like living, like maybe going from like the reservation to Free City isn't that, I don't think for me it was that bad. Like there's people everywhere if you get lost, like, hey, what, where am I going? Where are you going? And there's also resources, especially being at a bigger university. Like if you're struggling for food and stuff like that, there's a food bank. You go in there, show your, your student card and you get unlimited amount of groceries if you need it. Or if you need winter wear, you go in there and you get unlimited amount of winter wear. So there's always somewhere that you can look to for help. And I think that's one of the biggest things that also kept me here was because I am a first generation college kid. My dad didn't go, my mom didn't go, my sister probably won't end up going either. So, you know, I'm kind of out here on my own. 
So, you know, being able to realize that there's people that are in the same boat as you really, like, helps me stay afloat. So, like, wherever you go, realize there's somebody, at least one other person in the same boat as you, and there's resources there for, them, yeah. for your help. And specifically, we are those resources, like, unite ourselves. That's kind of our mission, is to give you a home away from home. Like, all of us are different tribal affiliations, all of us are from different places, but like every week we meet together, we talk, like we plan events, we do things on campus to like kind of let like all these people, 20,000 non-natives know that we're here and we matter just as much as they do. So like we, like there's days where we come in and we're just like, dude, like how's your week? Like, how are you guys? What happened? Like we tell stories, we eat, we talk, like we do fun stuff too. Like we're gonna go to haunted houses next weekend and like hang out, have pizza. And then like, we're also planning things for Native American Heritage Month. So it gives you like the opportunity to like have people older than you, younger than you, give you advice, give you places to go, give you resources, and to just kind of unwind and be around Native people unapologetically, like to be able to be your and to talk about things only you would understand or get without having to feel isolated from being away from your family or like feeling homesick and stuff like that. I think a barrier for me was definitely, like you said, moving from Lincoln High Diverse School to UNL and just being around so many white folks with so few people of color around me. Um, and like the most important thing I keep telling myself every day, and I've told myself this since like freshman year, is we paid the same amount of money. Maybe it's not my money that paid for my tuition, but I got this. Um, scholarship money, I got money from the tribe to be here, so I, ha I have every right to be here as much as anyone else, so just don't forget that you have the right to be at whatever college you pick. Do you guys all live on campus, or do you guys live outside campus? So I just I'm going to start the ball. I, I like to talk. I don't know if you can tell. I love talking. <laughs> but, uh, my first semester, um, as a uh, Buffett Scholar, you're required to live on campus your first year. But I was I was ready to get out of there, so I did move off campus, which, um, yeah, the, commu the commuting is a little harder just because you're not in the middle of everything, but it's great. Like, you meet older people. You meet other people who are, like, grad students and stuff like that. I love living off campus because you also get to get away from school if you need that break. Whereas the, when you're living on campus, you're surrounded by the books all the time and you're surrounded by people like, oh, I just flew my exam. I got to study. I got to do this. So living off campus was really great. Like, it's great for me because I get to, like, okay, I'm home now. I can do what I need to do. I can take my break. I can go for a walk. I can go to... And so, like that, like mental space, that physical space, like gave me like a good boost of like confidence in my grades and stuff. You guys, um, me, campus. me as a freshman, you're have you have to live on campus, and um, I live in Harper Hall, and I really like it. Like uh, my floor, um, floor six, um, we're really close. Like um, my hall, we're really close. We always do stuff together. Like we get it, we get together, and we'll do group activities. Or we always write on our mirrors in the bathroom and we'll, what do you guys want to do this week? Or what's your favorite this? What's your favorite that? And just to get to know each other, and it's a really good environment, especially in my hall. I feel like um, we have a big group chat of like the entire hall and um, everybody will just talk in there. It's, it's a good environment, I feel like. I love campus as well. I live in Harper, too. Um, I slept down and didn't get a roommate, so I got <laughs> yeah, I like I like living on campus. So it's convenient. Walk down the street here at the library. So, yeah. It's nice. Um, I currently live on campus. I'm a junior. Um, part of the reason why I still live on campus is just because of my friends mainly. They like the convenience. Um, another thing to think about is that at UNL, if you live on, and I'm sure it's like this at many other universities is if you live on campus um, as an upperclassman, you get like pretty decent discounts. Um, and you're also like on campus kind of forced to interact with um, people on your floor and um, it kind of opens you up a little more. I lived in Harper High freshman year and that was a pretty good experience on floor six. Um, we were neighbors. Yeah, we were neighbors. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good experience, but Having lived in Lincoln my whole life, I definitely wanted to get back in my own neighborhood, and so now I live with my sister in an apartment 
but it's like a 10 minute bike ride to campus, usually less than that, depending on how much I sweat. Um, and even though Lincoln is not like a giant city, it does have diversity and little pockets of neighborhoods that have a lot of rich culture in them. So I'm happy to live where I do, but also being in such close proximity to campus. But another reason why living on campus is good is even closer to campus. Yeah. I lived in Harper, Harper 6, <laughs> uh, my freshman year for the first semester, and then I moved to a different dorm. The, one, like, the thing about living on campus is like sometimes the, there's a lot of rules. Like you can't always be out past a certain time without having to check in at the door and like different things like that, sharing a bathroom. Like those things didn't sit right with me. <laughs> so I moved on campus because I like, I've always been an independent person. Like I was on my own at 15. So I was like, why am I living with people again? So like if you have that scholarship money, Honestly, living off campus can be cheaper than living on campus. And so that's a big deal for you than like it living off campus, even down the street from school is helpful. I live right across the bridge, right by the stadium from campus. So it's a five minute walk over the bridge and then I'm back on campus. But like I get my own room, my own bathroom. I can cook in my own house and not have to deal with anybody else around me. No yelling girls, no noise, no nothing. Like it's nice <laughs> to live off campus. <laughs> But living on campus has its perks too, like being able to be right there. If you're late for an exam, you can run out the door and be there in five minutes. But for me, I had to like pre-plan my day and how I get there, whether I drive or walk and stuff like that. And also like living on campus teaches you a little bit. Like if you're younger, it taught me a lot of responsibility because living on campus, they just take the price of your housing and food right out of your scholarship so you don't have to worry about it where I once I moved off I have to worry about rent I have to worry about utilities on grocery shopping it teaches you budgeting time management like we had our inspection we had to make sure the whole house is clean I had to make sure I was home for that I had to make sure like how much groceries you know pre-planning and stuff like that whereas like growing up with a single father and stuff like that I was doing that stuff but not to the extent of like doing it on my own so it taught me a lot of responsibility and like they said it's really convenient like my classes were like a 10 minute walk so i could sleep to like the very last minute now i have to wake up at least an hour before make sure i catch that shuttle to get on campus and then walk to my classes so it teaches you a lot of time management skills you know responsibility when and where to go where you have to be and stuff like that so thing with me living off campus doesn't necessarily have to be a barrier like one of the greatest things about living off campus is or for me my situation that the shuttle comes like right across the street from my house. So in all reality, it takes like five minutes to get to campus. So I would say like for all of you that are, I know a lot of you are tra gonna try and transfer to a four year institution. Before you like buy that house or before you buy that, or you rent that house, not buying, wow. <laughs> but before you rent, seriously, look at, your, look at your shuttle schedule or look at your shuttle routes. Cause if you look at your shuttle routes, you can find out where you can live. And usually like, you know, they. The universities they tend to like you know they strategically plan this route so in all reality you could be living right next to your classmates in some, in some instances a lot of my classmates actually live like on my street we call it 38 block a lot of great suits on that block in a while uh so that's one of the great things it's and second thing is it's cheaper to live off campus but if you feel like you need to live on campus live on campus it's super convenient at times you know so, yeah, but living off campus has its perks. <laughs> Next question. I'm going to ask about student life. That's what we're here. We're living it. <laughs> Did you have, so could you talk about, you know, some other students that have transitioned out that may have been non traditional in the sense that they're older, <laughs> children, how do they work with the system? how United University may have helped them finish out. I don't think we had anybody. I don't think we had anybody. Oh, I, I know personally I have friends who like went and got married and like had kids and there's housing for them so they can they can come live on campus with their husband and with their kids. Like I have personal friends who do that but like I don't think we've had anybody in Unite that's had kids or got married and yeah. like we don't have anybody that, that has a family. Like our oldest member of Unite is twenty seven. And he started school, stopped going, and then went back. And now he's about to graduate. So, like, don't feel like your age will, 
affect anything on Kimberly. You can do anything that anybody can do, no matter how old you are. Like, I have a friend, she's not um, a Native American student per se, but she's got a full ride. She has two kids and is my age. She's 19 years old and she's doing it. And she passed her praxis and she's about to start teacher's college. Like, don't let, like, life happens, but that doesn't mean you can't be immersed in academia. Like, that's never going to be a barrier for you. Um, another thing to think about is that um, don't worry about like your age and your time because um, for example even if you finish like 35 years old with schooling you're still going to be working like 30 years until you retire. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, <laughs> so like uh, I mean I think you deserve to give yourself that time to give yourself the education you want. Right. It's your life do what you want with it. Like, Missy Thomas came and talked to us and talked about how she was an undergrad and had a baby, and she drove back to Santee every week to see her son and still graduated with a bachelor's and now has a master's degree. Like, you can do it. It may be hard. It's hard for everybody, but, like, you're going to cry. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to cry. <laughs> like, you probably already have been crying. <laughs> like, it's cool. Like, you'll do it. That exam breaks your heart, man. Yeah. It was weird. That's what I was gonna ask. Have you guys taken midterms yet? Yeah, <laughs> we're in it right now. Um, yeah. I'm never home. Like my laundry from like two weeks ago is on my floor because I'm here studying all the time. And then I got a meeting, and then I got an exam, then I got a, like I'm busy. I like to be busy. Like I like to be not home, but like at the same time when I go home, I'm like dang. I bought those groceries three weeks ago and I haven't ate them yet. Like, in the end, it's worth it. Like, to see, like, you got a 98 on that exam because you put in that hard work. Or, like, you get a shout out from your professor because you put in that hard work. That's like, okay, she notices me. Like, she sees my name, she sees my hard work. And that, that's what I strive for all the time. I mean, sometimes I get a 60, but it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Midterms for, uh, like, a lot of midterms aren't really, like, they don't really call them midterms they're just an exam but they somehow are at the same time <laughs> like, yeah. and so you just kind of have to plan it out but i feel like you'll get through it like once you get in the groove of like okay this this teacher is like this the exam's going to be like this and like you just kind of have to play it like how it goes finals are the same way a lot of finals that i've learned aren't cumulative they're usually just an ending exam or an ending paper something like that a lot of teachers don't like to give cumulative finals so they're not as stressful. I feel like social media and like our attitudes make it sound worse than it actually is yeah. because we're dramatic. <laughs> but like, it's livable. Like you can do it. And also like a piece of advice, like in high school, if you were that kid that like talked to the teacher or like made your face known, you were known as like a teacher's pet. But in college, that could be your biggest like tool. Like if you're like a point two away from having an A, and that teacher knows your face, and you're like. You know, I did fail that quiz or something like that, but is there a way I can get that point two up? They're like, well, I know you, you've been in class, you come up to me, okay, I'll just give it to you. Like that happened to me last semester, I was a point two away from an A, and I got it because I talked to my teacher. Especially us being such a small group, going up to your professor at every class, be like, my name is this. You know, usually one of, all of us have like a name that's like, uncom like uncommon, like White Feather's my last name no one's gonna have a white brother last name in my class. So like, if she knew my face and seen my name, she'd be like, okay, that's that girl, she works hard. So like, don't be afraid to go up to your professor, like, my name is this, um, I sit in this seat, or I'll be sitting right here. Sit in the front as well as, you're gonna hear a lot about the T zone, so it's like up the aisle or um, in the front, you know, be known, you know, wear a bright colored shirt the first day or something like that. Just like, don't think it's not cool to like be known by the teacher because it can really help you. Like, I got lucky my first semester and he dropped my whole final exam because he said I was a cool student. I didn't have to take it because I was participating in class and because I talked to him. So, I mean, use it to your advantage. And like, most of the professors, they want to know you. Like, yeah. they want to talk to you. They want to get to know you. Um, a couple times, my first classes, I didn't talk to my teachers and throughout the week, um, I just talked to them about something. So I went up to them and just started talking to them because that's how it was normally for me back in Winnebago and they just be like, hold on, what's your name? Who are you? You know, they, they want to get to know you because it, it helps. It really helps. It helps them and it really helps us, like, in the long run, it really does. Yeah, another thing too, if, like, you're, like, a really shy person or you don't want, like, you know, sometimes, like, you can be, like, self-conscious sometimes, like, we're, we all get that way sometimes. Like, going in your, in your professor's, like, office hours, that could be, like, the greatest thing you could do 
because I had this one paper, I wasn't sure how to ask the question in class without like seeing like, you know, like everybody thinking I'm stupid, but like, so I went in and it turns out everybody had the same exact question and they were all coming in during the office hours. And by coming into the office hours, I got my answer question, or my, my question answered. <laughs> yeah, so I got my question answered. And instead of getting like a C on that paper, I actually got an A on that paper. So going in is actually so much better. Like if, you, if you're not cool going into suitors that time too, go in and see your professor could actually be like the best thing too, because the professor is great in your paper. He knows what's going on. He or she knows what's going on. So go in and see your professor. They will like seeing you there. It's one of the best things you can do. Don't be afraid to make somebody do their job. Yeah. That is a big thing with like big institutions because these like especially if they're a doctor, usually they're here for research and not because they want to teach. And so that's why they have four TAs for the class because they're worried about their research. They just have to teach the class. So like you can go up to them and you can talk to them. Your advisor, same thing. Go in there and sit there and be like, I need you to do this because that is your job. So do it for me. Like make sure that you're getting the best out of this institution because you pay to go here. You're paying for these people to help you. So don't be afraid to ask a question. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. If you don't think that grade was fair, argue. Because a lot of the time, the professor will give you those points back. I, no joke, in a class of 150 people, our professor, who is a doctor, wrote our test questions wrong. And we, as a class, collectively argued with her for an entire hour about each question. Like, we went through the whole test and we're like, that's not worded right. Why did we get that wrong? And she was like, oh, yeah, you're right. And we got points back and all of our grades went up because we stood up for ourselves. So don't be afraid, like, especially since we're minorities and we, like, kind of stick out a little bit. Don't be afraid to speak up and be that loud native person in the room. Don't be afraid to, like, like say what you mean and mean what you say. Like always make them work for you and work for yourself. And remember you're paying for that class. So if they're wrong, be like, okay, well, like I'm taking a race and ethnic studies course and you know, she had some facts that were like completely like left field. I like had to tell her like these are wrong. And at first they're gonna try to be like, well, I'm the teacher, whatever, whatever, but you're paying for the class, you're there for the, and if you know about that subject and if you know that things are wrong, like she said, don't be afraid to stand up and be like, this is wrong. Because at the end of the day, they're not only teaching you, they're teaching other people and you don't want something that you know is correct, especially about your own people, to go out there and then it be flipped and the narrative be changed again. Because we already deal with that already in the media. We're already told how we're supposed to be, how we are, how we're supposed to look. So be control, like she said, stand up. Like, I don't have a problem with it because I am who I am, but like I have friends that are scared to do it, so I do it for them. So if you have that trait, you know, and you're not afraid to do it, do it. Because then that only makes it better for future generations and future people. I mean, no, but like, you know, I go to games all the time. Also, if you like, kind of like, if you're not part of like the system or anything like that, and you don't get like part, you're, you're not a team. There's also like intramurals. You can be part of that. Our clubs, club sports teams, they're all over campus. Every campus here in this country has intramural sports, and you know, you don't have to go to practice every day. You don't have to do all that kind of stuff, but you can just play it. It's really fun, and that's how you meet a lot of people. During my intramural basketball team, I actually got thrown in. I intentionally picked a random team. I was like, yo, I want to be with these guys. And you know what? Those guys are my best friends right now. I'm <laughs> yeah. Same same goes with like any like any other sport. Like if you're a part of it, it just feels like you're in high school, but like less intense. But it's still fun. Yeah, nature murals are really fun. Like our rec center is really really nice. Like they just renovated it a couple years ago. So we've got like all types of the line. Like if you like to lift, like you can go lift. If you like to run, you like to swim. We have a lacrosse club on campus. One of our Unite members is in it. So like they play lacrosse every week. They have tons of different intramural teams in different leagues. Sand volleyball is huge here, like with the dorms, like they get real competitive, like they'll play all night long, stuff like that. If you like are interested in being closer to like the D1 stuff, like if you want to work in the football stadium, that's an option too. They do like work study jobs where you can make $3,000 a year just by working a minimum wage job here on campus. I worked in the football stadium, so I was really close with like a lot of the football team a lot of volleyball team. At first I was a little starstruck because I'm like, that's Adrian Martinez. Like, oh, cool. But like, he's a cool dude. Like, and so you can do stuff like that if you're interested, like, and you like were an athlete and you're passionate about that. If you're like into nutrition and stuff, they have like nutritional people who like make their like 
protein shakes and like give them food and stuff like that or like work throughout the stadium which is really cool yeah and i'm part of the powerlifting club here on campus so we live three days a week together and in between i do my own workout as well as um i was there was a rugby team there, but it's not here anymore. I was going to join that. But, like, there's so many choices. We have over 600 on campus, as well as if there's something that you don't feel like you fit in, you can make it happen. If there's, like, a game or, like, a sport that you know that is, like, probably not from this country or something you want to bring it in, you can do that. You can need an advisor and six members, and you can start it. So there's always somewhere that you can either find where you fit in or you can make yourself fit in kind of thing. Personally, I don't do any sports, obviously. But um, but I love to play volleyball. I play basketball or volleyball my whole high school, and um, I go to the rec center almost every day with Jameson and some of other of my friends. And there's always people there at the volleyball courts already. Everybody's super nice, and they'll just they'll join in or we'll join in, and you, that's how you get to know people. Like through sports is a really good way to get to know people and. We'll just be playing and old oh, What's your name? What's your name? And where do you live? And that's how you make friends. And it's it's a good way to make friends because especially doing something that you both like love doing. You know, even, even if you don't love doing it, but you like doing it, it's something to do. So, I like watching a big thing too. Like we're gonna, they have this um, event at the rec where it's like the football players. They have to build their own boat. And then they have to try to like dump water in each other's bone. Whoever sinks first, like loses or something. And like that's a big thing. Like the rec center is filled with people watching that because it's like these big three hundred pound dudes like in these little boats trying to sink each other. You know? <laughs> so it's just like things like that. There's like you can go watch the soccer games. You can go watch the football games. As a student, you get free baseball tickets. What other sports? Yeah, I think gymnastics is like a dollar. Yeah, football free is basketball. like hundred and seventy for but season tickets. Season and that's just discount price. Yeah, I think that's basketball is like forty. Yeah, yeah, basketball's cheap, women's basketball is really cheap. Yeah. And, and there's like Facebook groups where people are selling their tickets. Like you can yeah. get a football ticket for 20 bucks and it's in the student section. And to be a part of like the student section is a new experience because it's like everyone has that school spirit. On like high school, it's like 10 people are like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Where in college, it's a big thing, game day. It's like yeah. tailgating. It's like on the weekends here, it's, you're not going to find parking. You can't there's go. There's so going. many people here, yeah. It's like a sea of bread. Yeah. Don't yeah. drive. Yeah. Don't bring your car on week, game weekends. Yeah. Don't, don't even try to go to a restaurant after like five o'clock don't but i mean it's fun like you see that you see the spirit so yeah and those like those student tickets they're first come first serve so if you want to be front row at a football game you can like you just got to show up early like things like that like there's great opportunities to watch sports and be like they have um like a meet and greet day where you can meet the whole football team you can meet the whole basketball team like they really want us to interact with them because they're students too you're gonna have class with them like I had a summer class this year that had four starters in it for the football team <laughs> and like a bunch of basketball players and like they're just like us, they still have to do school. Like <laughs> and so they're really like relatable people and you get to meet them and see them on campus and be like, Oh, you were on T V like, hey. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. I helped peer review one of the Farniak brothers paper reports. <laughs> they're one of the, like the big linemen. So. <laughs> One lineman broke the chair in my criminology class, so I'm <laughs> get entertainment like that. Uh, they, they, I think it's well, yeah. yeah. Also, with the student tickets, um, uh, every Monday before a game day, uh, guest tickets go on sale. And they're like 60 bucks, and they, they can bring them in with the student section with you. And, but you gotta, like, you go on sale on Monday at noon, and if you're not, there, if you're not on the website at noon, then you don't, you don't have good, you don't have good Wi-Fi. Yeah. They're gone right away. <laughs> <Like, right. laughs> and then like every Monday at McDonald's, you get a free Big Mac if you get a sack, so it'd be popping on Mondays too. <laughs> Just go on there. Yeah, that's right. Hey, everyone. Yeah, like you just go on there and it's like, <laughs> Crazy questions? Yeah. Like non-school related? I don't know. Don't be afraid. I'm scared. Everything comes You gotta have so many questions. So besides school, like in Lincoln, what do you guys go do? Like around town, what do you guys hang out? Well, if you're of age, there's the bars. But a lot of because we're in a college town, a lot of the clubs do have like 18 plus nights. 
So you go on there and it's just packed and you show your ID, whatever. Or they have like themes and have like game day theme or something like that. So it's like Tuesdays, Thursdays, student discount. The movie theaters, Tuesdays is five dollars. Thursdays is six dollars. Um, I don't know, like. Yeah. Does Lincoln have haunted houses? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 They do. Yeah. 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 Rokeberry Farm is 20 minutes outside of Lincoln. Eagle is also 20, 20 minutes outside of Lincoln. So there's a, like that stuff too. There's a fun stuff, country stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, and if you've never been to Omaha or like if you want to go to Omaha, they have, we have a bus, a free service bus that goes from Lincoln to Omaha every day. So you can ride that, go to Omaha, chill for a day and come back if you want to like go to school or Omaha. That's a free service to students. Um, there's always concerts going yeah. on, all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff, festivals, food downtown. Downtown always has something happening. But yeah, shameless plug, I work at Main Street Cafe, downtown, it's a bar. We do Thursday student nights. So like, if you're a student, they, it's like $5 at the door, but like, it's a club. So like, people go and turn up or whatever, yeah. and they go to their 8 a.m. on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's always something happening. Like, yeah. there's socials and stuff, and formals that they throw for like, Greek life. Or just like other socials where like they'll do like, hey, pizza and a movie. And um, our film school does a lot of native screenings too, like native films and native film festival stuff. So that's always entertaining. There's always lead center. We get discounted tickets to go to like theater productions and concerts and other movie screenings, dance recitals, whatever you're into, you're gonna be able to find it here or in Omaha, which is 30 minutes away now. If you speed 30, 45, it should be the speed. Yeah. <laughs> but on these campus, also, you get uh, it's free Friday bowling. So there, there's a bowling alley over there, the dairy store with like homemade ice cream. They have the animals over there. So, as well as like the beginning of the semesters where all of the clubs go out and like try to get people to join. So it's like free stuff Sunday. You get free food, free, you know, coupons. You get things to go to like, you know, the tattoo party gets out coupons sometimes. I don't know. There's like things like that. As well as like, there's just clubs out there that will give out like free donuts and and coffee and then you're like oh i want to join the club or whatever so it's like when you look for it it's there as well as sometimes if you're just on your way to class it'd be like there too yeah so. plus it'd be like protest marching oh yeah every week yeah there's some there's something there. there really is a march every week for the climate change stuff um every friday they're marching to the capitol <laughs> so definitely definitely that um, I go to the bay a lot. It's just over Antelope Valley, um, that direction. And it's a skate park, but it's also a coffee shop. And it's also an art venue, and it's also a concert venue. So not only does it get you involved with like skateboarding, um, but they have uh, like a kids program there. Um, for impoverished students in Lincoln to go to the Bay, learn how to skate. They get snacks for free, they get um, dinner for free, they get all these cool opportunities and because of that there's a really tight-knit community at the Bay and there's also quite a few Native kids at the Bay too so if you ever get lonely on campus and the Unite meeting isn't for another week, the Bay is just <laughs> over the bridge and you can go talk to some little girl who wants you to learn how to kick flip for her. Yeah. Right. Or even like if you want to get more in touch with like your native community too, like the Indian Center, Lincoln Indian Club and like the Ponca Tribe, they always have hand game or dance. They always have something going on. Like they do like exercise groups once a week with like native youth and with like elders. They do different talking circles. They do ceremony like if you like are feeling homesick or anything like that. Or if your family wants to come down and be like, hey, can we can make you meet up like at the core dance or whatever they have going on down there too. Like that's always an option. There's all kinds of stuff to do. You just have to look for it. Yeah, I didn't really answer the question. What I do, um, I'm an impulsive person. So I'm like, look, you always have the tattoo shop. <laughs> here, so you know, like me and my friends are like, you want to get a piercing today? Yeah, let's go. I don't know how many times I've done that this semester, last semester, I'm always there. But like, it, once you find your friend group, you guys are like, I guarantee you guys would do spontaneous things, yeah. like getting a tattoo, or like, let's go to this fancy restaurant. Do I have money for it? No. Am I going to still eat there? Yes. Like, it's just that, like, for some reason, <laughs> college students are always talking about how broke they are, but they're always getting Chipotle, always getting canes, always at some sort of restaurant, you know, yes. or like, someone pulls up in a new car, didn't you just say you couldn't afford that parking ticket, but you got a new car? Don't know the logic of it, but it always happens. Like, there's always something to do. I mean, it might yeah. cost you about fifteen dollars, but it's okay. Yeah, campus yeah, is pretty entertaining too because yeah. we always have people down here like screaming at us, like oh. trying to promote whatever 
it is they believe in. Like this one guy was yelling, he was just saying all kinds of crazy out of pocket stuff. Like just, and we just like gathered around and made fun of him (laughs) because he was yelling at us. Like all you do is like bad things. We're like, you're crazy, dude. Like there's always people doing wacky stuff. There was a giant beach ball that was like eight feet tall one day. Like and they were just writing on it. I don't know what that was for, but like (laughs) you're always entertained. And there was a camel last year. Yeah, maybe just a camel. Sometimes just a camel. Just sit. Yeah. Until you want to drive a cow. Like. Yeah. Yeah. It gets crazy. Yeah. Like, two groups came on campus, and they like broke together to like bring attention to one group. Like, like I okay. Last year, I think there was two groups that came on campus, and one of them, maybe both of them, wanted like more awareness of their groups. So like, one of them was all about making everybody else upset so that the other group will get attention. So I think that happens sometimes too. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So people all hand out free books. There's yeah. free candy sometimes. Sometimes I'll just walk through the union and I'll get free candy. I like that. I don't know who plays Pokemon Go, but campus is full of Pokestop, so there's also a lot of Pokemon specific Pokemon types around here yeah and like i said free food's a big one so if you're hungry you're never gonna go hungry in kansas all you gotta do is walk around there's somebody <laughs> hanging out there <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> somewhere. It's like, like a dollar for something a dollar and 50 cents for something and you're like dude i'm broke i'm hungry oh okay here you go like yeah honestly i had a friend that like walked three or four blocks to buy girl scout cookies and the things you do for a free t-shirt like i lived on the edge of campus last year i would walk across for a free t-shirt and some free food like that's what entertainment on campus i guess yeah <laughs> so to be a part of unite do you guys have like um like paperwork that's to be filled out, you kind of just be like, you just kind of show up. Show up, say what's up. Right now, you're a member of Unite. Like, there you go. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you do have to pay your dues, which is $5 a yeah, person. $5. But that's just to help us, like, provide, like, a t shirt or, like, food for, like, a meeting yeah. or something like that, or to do activities. But, like, that's the cheapest you probably ever find for, like, for a club. Like, some clubs charge $50 a person per semester. We're only charging $5. $5. And that's to benefit us, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And the only reason you have to do paperwork is if you like need to one of us up or something like that. Other than that. <laughs> <laughs> paperwork, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Good questions. Yeah. Good questions. It's good for me because I like to talk, like I said. I can talk for hours. <laughs> Big from this side of the room, like yeah. y'all kind of quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I know y'all got questions. At least one. Yeah, at least right. one. This place is huge. You have to have at least one question. One question. It could be completely left field, and we'll answer it. Right. Completely out of pocket. We're, We're, open. Open. Yeah. We're used to that. We're used to out of pocket yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they be wild. <laughs> like it could be like what's like to walk by Greek life house again on a Saturday night. <laughs> what are the bottoms like on game day? Yeah. <laughs> Transportation. You get free bus passes <laughs> as a student, so you never have to pay. Yeah, you can't say you had a four local. Can't have that. It's a dry campus. Yeah, dry right. campus. So not alcohol allowed on campus. <laughs> FYI. Don't bring it. And don't smoking like free. Don't get hot. Smoking, that's like $50. Right. Right. You're bait free. Too. You're bait free. Not Just like cigarettes. No, even if you can see a professor smoking a cigarette behind your car, it's still free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the professor. Yeah. You have the museum. You get it for free for that. Probably all kinds of stuff. There's First Friday Art Walks, so if you're interested in art, you can just walk downtown, walk into a gallery for free. They usually have free food, maybe some little stickers you can take on. Sometimes it's pretty fun. Yeah, there's work too. So like work study, um, if you work at the university, your stuff isn't taxed directly. So like if you work, if you're getting paid ten dollars an hour and you work ten hours that week, you're gonna get paid a hundred dollars, not ninety six forty seven or something like that. You're gonna get paid that amount, and as well as work study is 
to work around your schedule. So if you can only work Monday from two to four and then Thursday from three to six, then that's what you're gonna work. So it's really helpful with that. As well as there's um, jobs all around here. They understand you're a college student, you're a college student first before you're a worker. Mm -hmm. So they're really good at working with your schedule and stuff like that. So. You had any do work study now? I did work study my first year. I gave tours of the campus, which was a workout because campus is campus. <laughs> um, my second job, I worked overnights at the Lead Performing Arts Center, so I cleaned it, cleaned everybody's popcorn on the floor. Yeah, so I worked from like 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. I'm a night owl, so that was good for me. Like I would have my textbook like while I'm cleaning, so I'd study too, or I'd listen to my audiobooks that I had to read for class while I was cleaning, but it's really nice. And that, that extra money every couple of weeks was really nice, you know, oh, I can get a coffee today, or I can like, Go to Burger King today or something like that, you know. So. <laughs> um, there's also there's also a March for All. I think it's a program that they have in connect in connection with the Lead Center, um, so you can get like a, I think it's a ticket to a show at the Lead Center for free. Yeah. Like the Phantom, they were giving out free tickets for Phantom if anybody's like into that. So. Yeah, a lot of these a lot of these companies in this area, like Starbucks, they have like uh, they have tuition payback programs. I know McDonald's has that. So Jersey Mike's actually had it for a little bit too. I, I worked at Jersey Mike's part of my part of my tuition or part of my paycheck actually back to my tuition. So there's like a lot of these like different like companies. They all they also work with students too. So if you don't qualify for uh, if you don't qualify for student uh, or I said, uh, work study, you can definitely do those other options too. That's like, like and you even have the job grants. Yeah, yeah, we all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, most, like, if you qualify for Pell Grant, UNL has a thing called College Bound Nebraska, and they will, most, most of the time, I'm pretty sure, they will pay the remainder of your tuition as much as they can. So, if you qualify for Pell Grant, coming here, most likely you'd be tuition free. Like, it's more like room and board and things you'd have to think about, because Nebraska does an amazing job of taking care of you financially. Like, whether it's through unsubsidized loans, and like if you need those, but I'm pretty sure if you qualify for program, they will help you with the rest. Okay. My advice on that, I even though I was a Buffett scholar, I didn't plan for like the extra, so like food or like if I needed a jacket or something like that. So like if you do get a lot of financial aid for your schooling, my advice would be like have that extra money just in case because you don't know what would pop up, like bring your leg or something like the school isn't going to pay your hospital bill for that. But like just to have that extra like cushion so you are okay because I did struggle my first semester because I was like, okay, I, my school's paid for it, but I didn't think about the extra stuff, like wanting to go out and stuff like that. So, and then I, I was, I did take out a loan for my computer, but it's, um, I don't have to pay it back until after I graduate, like a month after I graduate, which is really nice, as well as they help you with that. So they help teach you like where to save, how to save for that, as well as they'll help you if you need to like pay back and stuff like that, so. Yep, huge proponent of coming to college. Please save your money. Like, you know, that scholarship check, like some of you might get a refund. It's gonna look really nice. You're gonna wanna spend it that first weekend, buy a TV, buy like a bunch of new things for a new room, new new place. Save it, seriously. A lot of people always say, a lot of financialists, financial analysts, like all these like financial advisors, they always say, save your money before you go to college. At least have $500 as a backup. Don't even spend that money because something's gonna happen. Your car's gonna break down. Tires gonna go down or something. Somebody's gonna break your window. Somebody's gonna steal like your. So I've had my textbook stolen. But <laughs> don't you know, have, campus. Seriously, don't leave it. That's literally so much money. Have that five hundred dollars, or if you can't have five hundred dollars, have as much money as you can saved up. Call that your emergency fund. Save it. Yeah, because five dollars goes a long way. Seriously, it does. I can make that last forever. Personal experience without. <laughs> When my um, refund check hit this year, I was in Denver, and I got five thousand dollars in my account. And I was like, "I'm in Denver. I got money. Like, I was like, let 'Let's go. Like, vacation just got so much better.'" And then I spent a little bit of money, and then I came back first in October, six hundred dollars in my UNL account. It's like, "Yeah, hey, you need to pay this by the twelfth, or we're gonna put a hold on your account. And you can't enroll in school next semester." So like you gotta think about that stuff ahead because if you don't see it on your bill that the month, it might come up on the next month. And then you're like, oh snap, that's six hundred dollars I didn't even think about. So then you gotta like rebudget and replan everything, especially if you live off campus like me, because you got rent, car note, bills, like you gotta think about that stuff. So it's like really important. They will stress it 
every single day, like, don't spend your refund immediately because you never know what can happen. And also, like, during those times that you show up here at UNL, your end card is like a credit card. So, like, in the union, it has all that food. If you don't have, like, the 10 bucks to pay for your you can just scan your end card and it'll go onto your bill for that next month. I got in trouble my first year because I was I didn't know what a credit card was like. I was like, oh, for food, like, I can get it. But then it popped up on my account, like, where am I going to get this $300 from? Because I spent my refund and didn't think of my bills. So, like she said, plan ahead. Always plan ahead. And uh, especially talking about finances, don't get into a situation where you have so much you have to pay for. Because yeah. it seriously puts a cloud on your head when you're trying to study because it makes you lose a lot of focus. Even if it's Netflix, like, maybe you don't need to spend that $13 a month. Like, <laughs> but I just didn't get it for five, so I'm Yeah. <laughs> There's those parts yeah. too. Apple Music. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I feel like y'all have questions, you just don't want to say it. Uh, oh, going on saving the money, saving money. Download Uni Days. Yeah. Yes, yes. Download all these like student discount apps. They'll save you a lot of money in the, in the long run. Seriously, it will. Uni Days. You can like if you need like winter coat, Columbia is on there. You get like twenty five percent off, something like that. Yeah, there's this thing called Pocket Points too. So if you like lock your phone for a certain amount of time, you get points, and you get free food that way, or you get like major discounts. Like I cheat sometimes and just turn it off when I'm sleeping. And I get like 300 points at night, and then I'm like, free coffee, whatever. Like, there's apps like that that really help you out as a student. Like, the, like there's loopholes in everything. People like get free things all the time. I'm like, how did you do that? And it's just like, you, if you look for it, you're gonna find it. Yeah. Ooh, textbooks. A lot of times when you're buying your textbooks, look online, look on like different sources. Yeah. See that ice cream code, look everywhere. Because sometimes the bookstores are going to have it for cheaper, or sometimes they're going to have it for way more than what it's actually going to cost. So always be looking out for that. Save your, but just keep attacking, you know, your finances. Because at the end of the day, it's going to help you out. It's like self care. It's another thing. I'm pretty sure all of us can attest to. Self care does come into help, come into effect at times. Because there's there's sometimes where I was just like so burned out, but you know, I took a five minute walk down. The yeah, top five minute walk, or I went to McDonald's for myself, sweetie. I love sweetie. So, yeah. Seriously, just taking care of yourself, just realizing that at the end of the day, you are a human being. You know, we're so caught up in our schoolwork and all that kind of stuff, we kind of forget about that sometimes. Yeah. Set boundaries when you come to college. Like, if you decide to like come to a big university, set boundaries with your friends, with your family. Let them know like you can't always run to their aid all the time. Like, because I know like especially with Native people. We like to take care of our families. We like to step up when people need help. Like, that's a good thing, but you gotta make sure that you're also putting your education first. I have, like, I have two younger brothers. Like, I took care of them my whole life, and I'm still doing it from college, but there's, like, my brother's 17 now, so there's days where I'm like, you gotta step up and do it yourself. There's things like you gotta teach other people independence while earning your own independence and being like, I need to, I got stuff to do, I got stuff to focus on. Like, even with your friends, they'll be like, oh, let's go out, let's go do this. And like, no, I got a paper due tonight, I can't. Because some people will go do it and then be writing a paper 30 minutes before it's due and you're not giving that quality work anymore. So, like, boundaries is a big deal, like, especially for me anyway. Yeah, don't be that person with your laptop at the at the club or, like, out with your friends. Because there's people who are cool will bring their stuff and it's just like, you could have stayed home and, like, get it. <laughs> like, there's people who bring, like, their whole computers and they're, like, in the corner trying to, like, still party and have their computers. <laughs> just, like, don't be that person. In the movie theater. Yeah, in the movie theater, they'll bring their, their computer, they'll bring their homework, and they're, like, using their flashlight trying to watch the movie and write their paper at the same time. Like, don't be that person. Yeah. Yeah, don't be that person. Yeah. And uh, going off textbooks, um, if you're comfortable with doing it, you can resell them. Um, I do know there was one class I had, like the first day of class, a TA just like typed in the textbook online and he pulled up a PDF with like a previous version, but it had like the same exact like basic answers for everything. So it's like the same like content and questions, just worded like completely differently. So also like think about that. Yeah, you can sell your books back. Yeah, if you if any of you guys are going to English majors or anything like that, Gutenberg Press, if they offer like thirty five thousand books, a lot of the English majors, like if you're going into English or you're going into history, there's a lot of free books on there. A lot of free books. And sometimes if you download these apps like Scribd, you 
can find more subscription. You can get like unlimited access to all these books. And also interlibrary loan. If you just need one chapter of a book, seriously, just use it, use the library. It's so clutch. Or a lot of times too, like the library has the textbooks too, if you really look for it. Yeah, one of my students that works for me tells me that, first of all, we a lot of his classes have the, the book on reserve. So he can do all the studying without actually having to buy the textbook and stuff like that. You just have to do a bunch of your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are any of you education majors? Anybody going to be a teacher? Maybe you guys could all just kind of talk about, you know, your ride, start taking classes. Did you know what you wanted to do originally? Yeah. I, I knew from like five years old that I wanted to be in law enforcement and law. So like my track, I'm gonna be, I'm going to the police academy after I graduate then law school. I, I've always known I wanted to do it. But um, you know, there's other topics when you get to college are like you kind of question what you want to do and that's okay. I have friends that have changed their major three times and we're only sophomores. There's gonna, some people are gonna change it five or six times. And, and that's fine until you find like your little nook. But like with, um, so when you come, you get like an advisor and you go and talk to them and you kind of plan out what you're gonna be doing for the next four years, where you need to be, um, and you know, how many credits you have to be taking for in order for you to graduate within those four years. Sometimes programs take five. Personally, mine is take, it's gonna be four, but like my entirety of like my education is gonna be longer than that. Like I said, I'm gonna ultimately go back to law school after my, my years in the, in the police academy as a police officer. So, you know, I'm taking like my classes for my major. So I'm taking criminology 203 right now, police and society. So I'm learning how policemen, police people like work with the, with, you know, public and everything like that, as well as um, my minors, um, American Sign Language and Native American Studies. So I'm taking a Native American history class as well as an American Sign Language class. But, um, you know, if you come in undecided, you're, they'll put you in these different um, classes to see what you like. So my very first semester, I was undecided as a pre-law. So if you're pre-medical, pre-law, I think pre-engineering too, they put you as undecided. So um, I was like in history of hip hop, art history. I was in all these different classes that were really cool. But once you start figuring out what you want to do, then you start getting into these classes that are focused on what you want to do, so. And don't be afraid to come in and declare that yeah. one of my friends told me that. Um, it's probably for her is the best thing to do for herself because uh, she felt like she would have like maybe wasted her time like declaring a major and then maybe she would have taken some classes that may not have mattered as much so well, I can say like as an education major like some majors are very like this is your major and you can only do this job after you graduate some majors are like this, like you can major in this, but you can also go on to do many different jobs or like follow different career paths or like grad school if you want to do that can open up different doors. For me, I always knew I wanted to help people and I didn't necessarily know how. So I was like, well, maybe I will do social work or maybe I'll do psychology or I could do like health sciences or something. But I always thought like everyone needs that teacher or faculty member of their school that like is there for them. And I always wanted to be that for native kids and under like underprivileged kids like how I was. So I decided to do education. And then within education, you have to choose a major. So whether you want to do science or English or social studies, and I chose social sciences as a Native American person, I think it's important that we teach our own history. So I want to do that and like go from there and maybe do grad school to do like administrative things, be a principal. And UNL has a really cool thing called indigenous roots. So Native American um, education majors actually have more scholarship opportunities on campus. And it's run by a native lady, I can't remember her name. I know her first name is Nancy, but she also offers a job. And after you um, graduate, you pay back your um, scholarship through service. So if I decide to go with Indigenous Roots, I will have to teach either in Omaha or on one of the like four reservations in Nebraska. So I like that's a way for me to get back to my tribe or a neighboring tribe too. So it's really cool. Any questions? Yeah, so we'll be here in just a little bit. So really, I'm excited. <laughs> I've emailed her, but I haven't talked to her yet. So that's cool. Anything else? No other questions. Sorry. Bye. Bye. <laughs> also, go to class. Yeah, go to class. class. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> it's really easy to like wake up on a, especially now that it's getting cold and you're like, do I really need to get out? Like, do I really need to get dressed? Like, I really have to walk outside. It's so easy to be like, no, it's okay. I have like a free pass, but then that one day will turn into three days, will turn into four days, will turn into a week, and then you're behind. And then, yeah, it's just a snowball you don't want to build. Or it's like, do I really need to go to this lecture class even though it's all on canvas? Yes, you do. Because yeah. <laughs> most of the time, they'll go over everything so specifically. The professor will go over it so specifically in your lecture class. It's so important. Yeah, yeah. So, so how, how different from? would you explain the difference between being in high school and then now? Oh, oh. It's, it's day and night. It's day and night. In high school, you could go to class and just chill and then you take that quiz and it's like, oh, or you can cheat off your neighbor and your teacher's like, I know you're cheating, but you know what? I don't. In college, it's like, no, you need to be there to do your own work. You need to be able to like account for yourself. Like in your assignments, they're gonna like check, like, are you actually reading? Or there's pop quizzes. You can't make up a pop quiz. Like you don't want to miss that pop quiz because then it's that's another ten points at the end of your semester that you're like, dang, I could have had those ten points, or I could have had this quiz, or I could have did this. Like oh, the different. I just wish high school would teach better, like that. Yeah, when that attendance is for a grade, yes. you will be yes. right there, like, yes. <laughs> some classes, if you miss enough class, they'll just drop you from the class and you fail. Yeah. Some classes, your teacher will report back to the school that you're not going, and then they'll confront you and be like, why aren't you going to class, why aren't you going to class? That happened to me, I was embarrassed, like, it's not fun to have to deal with them being like, oh, well, you're a scholar and you're doing this, but you're not coming to class, why is that? Even if you have a good grade, they still are concerned about your attendance depending on the teacher. Some teachers, attendance is worth half, half the class. Some teachers don't care at all and won't even care if you're there. Like, it just depends. And that's like a good thing and a bad thing. And that's what's different from high school too, is like some high school teachers didn't care, some did. And same thing with college. Some high school teachers were really strict and was like, you sit down, you don't talk. Some college professors are like, all right, what do you guys think we should teach today? What do you think we should talk about? It just depends. Everything's different. Every professor's different. And that goes back to like being in connection with your professor. Like if you need that mental break and you're like, I just can't do it this week, which you're going to run into that and you have that connection with your professors, a lot of times, if not most times, they will understand. They're like, okay, well, here's what we're doing. You can make up this quiz. You can do this later. Like do what you got to do to take care of yourself. So, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you got to think about the value of education. You know, my teacher actually quantified it one time. He was telling me, yeah, $135 per, per lecture. That's how much you're paying. That's how much somebody else is paying. That's how much you're probably going to be paying per lecture sometimes. $135 per lecture, depending on how expensive your school is, it could come up to that number. It could be cheaper than that. But still, it's money every lecture. They're, that teacher's getting paid no matter, no, matter not, eh, no matter whether or not you're there or not. And that's really important to think about. Somebody believes in you. Somebody believes in you to show up to that class, to learn what's going to be taught in that class. Who knows, that one lecture could be a life-changing lecture. It could change like the whole course of your career. I'm telling you, it, it really could. If I didn't show up, like there was one time I, felt I was feeling really sick, but if I didn't show up to that lecture, I wouldn't be an economics major right now. I wouldn't have added that on. I'd be just mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or them extra credit points sometimes teachers are like okay y'all showed up today here's some extra credit oh y'all showed up today you don't have to do the homework tonight because like in the winter time it's a big thing like our class will start out with 150 and it snowed outside and it'll be 20 kids she'll be like okay you guys don't have to be here the whole time but here's like 20 extra credit points or something like that but it's it's beneficial to be in class yeah Oh, all right. Any of you guys want to be college professors someday? <laughs> I would like. I'm a native studies major, so I chose that major one because my mom is a teacher, and I thought maybe I'd want to be a professor. I'm still figuring that out, but that's okay because I'm only a sophomore. Um, but mostly, I chose that as my major because I either want to go into field where I can be a professor or where I can. Um, use my ethnicity, my culture as a way to encourage diversity and multicultural awareness, um, which pretty much opens the field to a lot of things. But plainly put, 
I can talk about Native culture and Native history from a Native perspective instead of letting a white person take that job, which is really important. And personally, I would never be a professor. I can't teach. I don't have the patience. Like, you know those memes or like those videos you see parents trying to like, what's one plus one? And they're like 27. I couldn't do that. I couldn't sit there and be like, this is like, I couldn't. But like, you know, I'm that student in class that like will tell the professor like, they like, can you change this a little bit? But personally, I'll, you'll never see me at the front of a class teaching. Like, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I might, depending on how grad school goes and how I feel about it, I might, maybe. I mean, sometimes they ask us to be professors now. People come to Unite all the time. And they're like, hey, can you come teach our class about you guys? And like, how, do, what do natives do? What do you, how's, what's your religion like? What, what do you wear? How do you speak? Like, we're approached all the time to come and stand in front of these lectures and talk about our lives. Like, we're supposed to know everything, especially when we're from different tribes. We're just supposed to know everything about all Native people ever. And they, like, seriously, like, all the white professors that teach Indigenous studies do this. Or they make us the topic of someone's project. So they will have non-Natives do projects on us. So we're approached by random people who are like, hey, I know you're native. Can you like take pictures and do an interview so I can write a paper about you for this class? Yeah. And so like we're basically professors in our own right now. So it's yeah, sometimes we run into like last year this girl wanted to interview at Unite, but she wanted us to wear a regalia all day and just like take pictures as we're going to class and we're like why can't you take pictures of us like in jeans? You know, like we don't wear a feather in our hair every day, all day, you know what I mean? So like, you're gonna run into that whole yeah. thing or it's just like, they just want to use us as, as their disposal, so. Like I'm a jingle dress dancer. I can't walk around <laughs> like in a full white dress and everything. I can sing right now. Yeah, that's all. We are at time for our um, next event, so. Okay. Let's take